Welcome, dear friends, to Cardiac Radio at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls with one more immortal messages. It's a program based on the book Psychophonic Instructions. It was originally published in Portuguese by the Brazilian Spiritist Federation. The spirit author, several of them through Chico Xavier, come to deliver to you and I peels of nourishment for immortality. And you are invited to join us tonight as we hear the words of a poet, a poet who in Brazil delighted the hearts of many. He was Luis Pistarini, and he was born in the city of Resende in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, he comes to us on a meeting, beautiful meeting, in January of 1955, almost 66 years ago, 65 and a half years ago, he came to talk about the importance of valuing time, of not wasting our time, because we are here on earth, but one day this body is going to die, but we're gonna keep on living, but we're gonna graduate knowing, have we aced at each and every subject, or have we wasted time? Have we learned what we had to learn? Have we helped as many people as we have committed? You and I are being asked tonight to evaluate it. He comes to give us a poem named Last Hour. Alan Kardec talks much about the importance of fulfilling our duties always. And he talks about how the last moments of life are precious as well. So, we are now inviting you to open the heart because this is about the poetry of the good spirits. He has in a few verses here, everything that we need. He says, last hour, the angel of death had come in, beautiful and pure, bearing a burning fire in his hands. It said to my sad and surprised heart, poor friend, it is yourself that I seek. The memory broke strange wall. Alone with me, lifeless and helpless, I returned to the past and found myself trapped in the anxieties of the dark path. Loves, ambitions, feathers, and difficulties, and the tear that flowed from my eyes bathed me the cold mask of wax. But in the abysmal shadow of the last day, I did not weep at the, existent, at the, at the existence that I was fleeing. In vain, I cried for the time wasted. Masterful. Luis Pistarini, in few words, precisely brought to us, give us a strong, strong reminder. We will regret the time we wasted. So, that doesn't mean we're going to overbook ourselves, that we are going to nonstop do things, but we're going to pay attention. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. He doesn't say the minutes, but the quality, the use of it. He wasted it. How do we often waste our time? This is the main question for us today. How often we waste talking things that are not fruitful? What else? Let's brainstorm here. Whether you're watching this on demand or not, think about it. Live, on demand, but think about it. How? Many times we waste our time. How so? By resting ineffectively. 
because we throw our physical bodies on the couch or on bed and we don't command the body to relax. Because I'm tired, Vanessa. I know. We're tired and we just throw the body, but you're not the body. It's like a baby that you take and put gently on the crib, in the crib, however we say it. It's about ourselves. Gently taking the body and saying, now I'm going to give you a bath. Now I'm going to give you a shower. Now I'm going to feed you. Now you're going to rest. And now I'm going to fly to learn, to progress. And when I come back, God allows, we will join forces once again to continue another day. How many times we waste our time eating more than we need? What else? How many times we waste time with unhealthy entertainment, drinking, partying unnecessarily? It's important to be at social gatherings. Jesus did so, and that's the law of society. But those that have a purpose, not the ones that are just because. Because there are people who spend the whole week planning their social gatherings because they have nothing else to do. No books to read, no courses to take, no people to help, but just to entertain the, sentence, the senses. A very hedonistic life. Or people who stay home all the time. They go to work and they dream of coming back and doing nothing at home. It's a waste of time. So Luis Pistarini, who was a very fruitful poet, writer in Brazil, very respected, especially in the city of Resende in Rio de Janeiro. If you ever stop by, you can go to the museum and see the much, the love that he had for life. And yet, he describes his death. When the angel of death comes, he doesn't say it's a bad thing. He describes as beautiful and pure. It's phenomenal the way he describes. Death is not your invention. It's not a human invention. It's God's mechanism for life. We call it death because it's the other side of the door. In one, you enter and then you come back. You could call it the, the comeback door of life. That's what it is. And he says it's a beautiful and pure thing. And it is. We need to make peace with death. I know. We have a hard time to say goodbye. It's about attachments, right? Especially attachments to ourselves, to this personality, to the connections we made, to the things we do. But we need to learn to detach. And he describes the process. It's like it had a burning fire in their hands and it says, it's you. And he describes how he has this collapse so gently, he describes it. And he says, I rewind the tape of life. Seeing everything I've done, the anxieties in the past. So we cannot run away from our memories. Have you been running away from your memories? Are there things you don't want to remember? We need to make peace with them. Because when we discarnate, they're going to be on our face. And we're going to be disturbed. And we'll be suffering. If you work with it, with the higher spirits, with a good therapist, you will learn to archive and make peace with those memories inside of you. So important. And it is possible. It's what we call emotional editing. Like ed editing a computer file. You can edit the emotions that you have regarding events in your life. And then he describes that he saw loves, ambitions, feathers, difficulties, and 
he couldn't do anything anymore. But what he regretted the most was, I cried for the time wasted. He actually says, in vain, I cried for the time wasted. You and I have a threefold exercise for the next 24 hours. One, to make peace with death. The angel of death had come beautiful and pure. We need to say, God created death. It can't be bad. Two, and I'm not saying this so we march towards death in suicide. No, but if it comes, we say, okay, I accept it. Manes, it's so easy to say, difficult to do, easier said than done. I agree. But it's not about me. It's about the law of life. You and I are being asked to make peace with death. How do you do it? Say, God, I appreciate life and the way back home. I appreciate life on earth and the way back home. I appreciate life and our way back home whenever you find it so. Okay? And then the second exercise we are asked to do, the second feature of it all, is to think about how we are wasting time in life. Are we wasting time? Is there anything we need to fix? Is there any way we can discipline ourselves better? How do you fix your waste of time? One exercise that mentor Joseph gave me years ago, he says, Manessa, whatever you're going to do, think. Are you going to regret doing this versus something that will be an investment in your immortality? And then when I rest or take a nap or do something that is easier, I say, no, this is an investment because I need to quiet down my physical body to continue the works. When I talk to friends, productively making connections. And then the third one is about our attachments. What are our attachments? If you want to do just one exercise, focus on the waste of time. Because this last hour, we're going to bring for you and I some time. Don't be anguished. Because you have been there, done that, and here you are. Here I am. But we can make peace with it by reevaluating how we're using our time. And now to calibrate ourselves and to feel how the good spirits, the protecting spirits, are guiding us to use better our time, we're going to pray. But not only for us, we're going to pray for everybody who is on earth. We're going to pray for animals, plants, for all the beings connected to us here on the earth as well. Let us play a beautiful song that elevates us even more, shall we? Visualize a beautiful field of lavender flowers inviting us to use our minds and bodies to renew our strength. Mother, Father, God, the blessings of nature. We want to thank you for creating us in this most amazing and wonderful world. 
where birds sing, where trees stand supporting our lives, where clouds shower us with the blessings of your love, where animals delight our lives with their company and their intelligence and with one another feeling the warmth of being together of growing and progressing always into realms discarnate and incarnated we unite our strength and forces to march towards your light, the light of your love. We thank you for the soothing invitation, the clear and friendly warning of Luis Pistorini, who through Chico Xavier is helping educate us. May we make peace with death, revisit our attachments, and use the sacred time you've given us to multiply our talents. We pray for our homes, we pray for one another, we pray for those who are in greater need than ourselves. We pray for the planet, our blue planet, filled with sacred, blessed water given to us by you. We praise you for your greatness today and always, and so be it. I know we could stand here the whole time and join this. For now, we're invited to do our exercise to multiply our talents using the preciousness of our time. We're going to stay here in this reflection, the possibility of exercising this and much more. While you and I are here at Kardec Radio, always nourishing our souls. Until tomorrow in one more Immortal Messages. Thank you, friends.